Okay, so welcome back. We saw last time that if we want to represent a sound of any type, either a regular noise or a musical sound, that the information about the sound that leads to what we perceive is completely captured by the displacement versus time graph, the history graph for our sound wave at the location of our ear. And we saw examples last time showing that for ordinary sounds like a clap, if we zoom in and look at the graph of displacement versus time, it has a lot of randomness to it. There aren't any obvious repeating patterns. Whereas if we look at any sort of a musical note, either humming or a musical instrument or um, some whatever other sound that would sound like a musical note, the key feature is that it is a periodic time graph. So there's a pattern that repeats almost exactly over and over and over again with a particular frequency. Okay. And so what I want to talk about today is within this class of sounds that we would call musical notes or within the set of periodic time graphs representing sound waves, um, what are the different properties that we can have that would distinguish different musical sounds from other musical sounds? So that's the first question that I want you to think about. What qualitative properties distinguish different examples of musical notes? How do they sound different from one another? So I'll give you a minute to think about that or actually just pause the video if you want and then I will talk about it now. So there's a few different ways that we would distinguish different sounds. And one of them would be the loudness. So if we have a, a musical note, then some musical notes would be louder than other musical notes. Another one would be the pitch. We have some notes that are higher some notes that are lower. And another one would be what we call the timber. And so this is the, this is the most complex quality that we are the, of this three, of these three. And what this means is what does the note sound like? So the timber is what distinguishes the sound of a trumpet from the sound of a cello or of a saxophone. If those are all playing the same note at about the same loudness level, then the thing that is different about them is what we call the timber. Okay, so those are, those are the main examples of the qualitative properties that would distinguish different musical notes. Okay, I'm kind of setting aside, um, I guess, something like vibrato, or if we think of a note that lasts for a short amount of time, then how quickly the note uh, comes on and how, how quickly it decays. So these things have to do with articulation. Here I'm just focusing on the properties of say a held musical note, um, which isn't changing its loudness or its pitch. So then we just have these three different properties. And what I wanna understand is how are those properties related to the properties that you would have in a time graph for a musical note. Okay, so this would be the time graph of displacement versus time for the air in a sound wave. This particular graph is actually one that I made using this microphone and playing a note on an alto saxophone. And so this is the actual displacement um, versus time for a sound wave in a sax for, a, for a particular note on a saxophone. So I have a few questions below that I want you to think through and, and then we'll talk about the answers to these questions and understand how the properties of this graph are related to these properties that we, that we thought about distinguishing different musical sounds. Okay, so let's go through these questions. First question was, how can we tell the graph that this sound, um, from the graph that this sound corresponds to a musical note? And of course, that is just that it has a particular pattern that repeats over and over again. 
In this case, the, the pattern lasts about 0 0.005 seconds long, and then it repeats again and it repeats again. And so those repeating patterns, the periodic time graphs, um, were are the are the that's the way that we understand that this is going to sound like a musical note rather than just any sound. Okay. We assume that this pattern is repeating many many more times. Okay, next question. Well, actually, let's do the third question. What is the frequency of this note? So that's just related to the period that I noted just a minute ago, that the period of repetition here is 0 0.005 seconds. And so the frequency is just the inverse of that, which is 200 hertz. Okay, so, the, so apparently this note, it was around 200 hertz. And so finally, we want to understand um, what are the properties of the graph that correspond to pitch, to loudness, and to timber. So you probably already know that pitch, whether a note is high or low, has something to do with its frequency. And so indeed, if we were to take this time graph and then think of a similar one that was just squished in the time direction, so it was the same things happening but at a higher frequency, then that would sound like um, a note with a similar quality but a higher pitch. The loudness of the note, assuming everything else is the same, is simply related to the amplitude on this graph. And so if instead of squishing it or stretching it in the horizontal direction, if I stretched it out in the vertical direction, so basically made a larger amount of displacement, but with the same shape, then that should sound like a louder note um, with the same quality. Okay, So it's just turning up the volume, it sounds like a loud saxophone, instead of a quieter saxophone. And then the final property that we can observe or, um, is that in these two cases, the shape of the graph is different. Okay, so other than the frequency and the amplitude, the other thing that we can vary is the shape of this displacement graph during one period. And obviously that, has a lot more that we can control compared to just the loudness or the amplitude or the frequency. Um, we can have an infinite variety of possible shapes for what happens during a single period. And of course that corresponds to the fact that we can have really an infinite variety of possible musical sounds. You know, we're used to humming, we can have humming or recorder or saxophone. Any two different saxophones sound different. Any two violins sound different. The only difference between a Stradivarius violin and the cheapest violin that you can get on Craigslist is the shape of this time graph. So it's just a slightly different shape and one of them happens to sound uh, very beautiful to us if played correctly and the other one maybe not so much. So in the next class, in the next lecture, we're going to get into more details about the properties of these shapes and how they relate to the timber or the musical quality of a note.